Ionic Framework is an open source UI toolkit for building performant, high quality mobile and desktop apps using web technologies. Recently, they released Ionic React to the general public. I wanted to take a look at this project and see why they're so excited about it. There's never been a better time to be a JavaScript developer. JavaScript allows us to write code once and run it everywhere from Electron apps to progressive web apps to websites to native mobile applications. JavaScript does it all. Over the last six years, we've seen the advent of so many new technologies that allow us to write cross-platform code. One of the main players in this space has always been Ionic. Back in 2013, the Ionic team set out to create a framework that allows developers to write simple JavaScript and HTML and compile it down into mobile applications. Back then, they were a little bit too early to the game, meaning they had to embrace the technologies that were out there at that time and utilize those as a foundation to create their solution. That meant that at that time, they had to embrace AngularJS, which was the most popular front-end framework. Fast forward to 2019 and the front-end ecosystem looks totally different. There's so many different options available now in terms of front-end frameworks and tooling that we can utilize. And so it didn't make as much sense for the Ionic framework to be so deeply coupled with a single framework. As any good team does, Ionic revisited their original vision and realized that creating a framework that doesn't rely on a single underlying platform makes total sense. They listened to the community and created a tool that works across frameworks. As of October 2019, they officially released the first version of Ionic React to the general public. Let's install Ionic and see what a sample React app looks like. The first thing we'll do is install the latest version of Ionic CLI. Now let's create a new app using the Ionic start command. The first thing the CLI asks is what framework we want to use. We get either Angular or React. So let's choose React. The next thing we're asked is what starter template we want to use. If we were creating a new app, we'd probably go for either blank side menu or tabs. The blank project will just start us with just the framework and an opinionated directory structure. The side menu will add on top of the blank start project by adding the side menu components scaffolded out for us to fill in. And tabs does the same thing with a tab bar at the bottom. But what we're going to do for this is we're going to go for conference, which will show off all the different features that Ionic has to offer. Now we have our project scaffolded, let's run Ionic Serve and look at what the conference app looks like. When we run Ionic Serve, the Ionic CLI compiles our code into performant minified bundles and automatically loads the application into our default browser at port 8100. So here we see the conference application as a desktop app. We've got the sidebar that doesn't open and close. We've got a list that we can click into. We can see the transitions. We can see a tab bar at the bottom. We can see cards with different buttons that apparently actually work. We can even see the Ionic team demonstrating how to use external libraries. Here we see Google Maps embedded within the application. We can see drop downs. We can see date pickers and we can see toggles as well. Let's see what this looks like in mobile view. So in Chrome, we can go to the inspect elements tab and we can click toggle device toolbar here, which will allow us to emulate different phones. So you can see how the Ionic framework automatically changes the layout to match the screen size. So here we have that same list that looks a lot more native. We've got pull to refresh here. We've got a button bar here. 
we can still go in and the transitions have changed to feel more native on the platform that we're on. In this case, we're looking at it on a iPhone 6, 7 or 8. We can use touch gestures to open the menu. We can see the models are opened on the desktop version, now open full screen. And the toggles look native. This is one of the reasons I love Ionic. It feels so nice and native and it's so quick and easy to develop for different platforms. So when we switch the emulation to an Android device, we can see that the Ionic framework automatically updates the UI to match the Android style. The toggles look different. The header looks different. The fonts look different. All right, let's jump into the code and see what that looks like. So a couple of things I see from the very beginning, they create Firebase config files that allow us to easily deploy using Firebase. And everything looks just like a normal React component. All the Ionic components are just normal web components, just like we're used to. Even in Angular, it felt very similar. Ionic has always been one of my favorite frameworks. They just seem to get it right. There's a delicate balance between creating a simple developer experience while still making it rewarding to create projects in. And I think they've nailed it. I'm really excited to see where this project goes. And I think I'll be using it a lot more for future projects. I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's made you as excited as it has me to create apps. And I'm looking forward to using this more. If you like this video, hit the like button below, subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any other videos. I'll see you next time.